To allow an accountant, CPA, banker, or financier to reduce the wealth of the company to a few simple lines of numbers on an darkened out-of-balance sheet to represent the real value of the company is a tragedy. Instead of trying to generate numbers every 90 days to satisfy the needs of people who are chasing the wrong goals, let's focus on more enlightened bottom lines. In the old capitalism, greed was good. In the new paradigm of enlightened entrepreneurship, greed is banished. Let it skulk away back into the shadows. The G used to stand for greed. The G now stands for giving. The whole purpose of the enterprise, to enlighten that enterprise, is not to get, but to give. G. Giving The third principle of enlightened wealth is giving. America is the richest nation on earth because it gives more in public and private philanthropy than all the other nations on earth combined. A billionaire from the last century, John D. Rockefeller, said it best. Think of giving not as a duty, but as a privilege. Why is it a privilege? Because giving lubricates the process of wealth building. You can see at our website, www.millionairehalloffame.com, that our students have earned hundreds of millions of dollars of profits from using our strategies. But more heartwarming are the tens of millions of dollars that these same students have already donated to charitable causes. We believe that giving is essential to long-term wealth. Givers get. It is our belief that money flows fastest to those who most anticipate the joy of sharing it. Giving primes the pump of the universe. In 1975, at age 19, a young man from Seattle founded a company called Microsoft. In less than 25 years, he topped the list as the world's wealthiest person. How did he do it? Were he and his partner, Paul Allen, just in the right place at the right time? When a truth be told, all of us are wealthy. You don't need anything else. We want to show you how to parlay what you already have into millions. How can we be so bold? Remember our reality TV show? We see ourselves literally knocking on selected doors all over the world. Inside each home, we will show the occupants how the millions they have longed for have their source right in their immediate living quarters, where they currently live. The money is all around them, hidden. The clues to the money are screaming at them. If they'll just learn how to listen, we want to show you how you're sitting in the middle of riches, invisible assets surrounding you. Million dollar ideas are swirling around you. Angels are anticipating the opportunity to assist you. Literally, for real, no kidding. If 75% of your value is hidden, what are your invisible, underutilized assets? The entire world of business operates off a standard balance sheet that lists assets and liabilities, debts and ownership. But over three quarters of the value of the entire company resides in the brains, the minds, and the hearts of the people who work there. The brand asset and all the things that do not exist on a traditional balance sheet are the source of the strength of the entire company. Everyone in the enterprise is already an enlightened millionaire, endowed with the incredible talents, gifts, connections, and ideas that when unleashed inside the enterprise can unleash enormous fortunes for everyone. If most of the value is hidden, why don't we focus on this? We believe that people will be much happier, more productive, and more successful if they quit focusing on the external assets and focus more attention on the internal, intangible assets. Every person in the free world already possesses assets worth in excess of a million dollars. Skeptical? Would you sell your eyes for a million dollars? You wouldn't. Well, since you own your eyeballs, but refuse to sell them, then you must own assets that have value in the millions. Would you sell off 20 points of your IQ to the highest bidder? Or your creativity for a million? You already are an enlightened millionaire. Even if you don't have a penny in the bank, you own assets that are extraordinarily valuable. 
It is a wise use of your internal assets that you will parlay into millions of enlightened dollars in short order. Inner wealth is a source of all outer wealth. No inner wealth, no external money. Most of us feel broke and unworthy to be wealthy. Was it their extraordinary genius, focus, and drive? Or was it their luck, pluck, and shrewd business acumen? All of this and more. But rather than asking how they did it, here is a more interesting question. Why did Gates become so successful? Did higher power know in 1975 that computers were going to be the next big thing? Was higher power the invisible hand that orchestrated the chance meetings, partnerships, and ideas that would eventually launch Microsoft? Did higher power know that this corporation would eventually employ more than 50,000 people worldwide? Did higher power know that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation would become the wealthiest charitable foundation in the world, donating tens of billions of dollars toward global health and learning? Where do million and billion dollar ideas come from? From human ingenuity. Where does that come from? We believe the source of brilliant ideas is higher power, who plants them in people who are destined to bring them to fruition. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Does the person first make millions and then get the idea to give millions away? Or does the idea that launches a successful business get downloaded into the mind of a latent potential giver, destined to succeed massively and then give vast amounts of the profits away? Not all successful businesses are enlightened. If 95% of new businesses fail in the first five years, what can we learn from the 5% of businesses that succeed? Survivors fall into three camps. The smallest group of survivors is the most visible. The Gordon Geckos of the world operate their in darkened businesses on stingy values and money-centric principles. They worship at the altar of increasing profits at the expense of everything else. The front pages of the newspapers are filled with the drama of their rise and demise, giving the impression that they represent all businesses. The next and largest group of the 5% survivors are those stable, ethical businesses that succeed due to a lot of hard work, persistence, and smart business practice. They latched on to a great idea and ran with it, without giving much credit or blame to a connection with higher power. Many of the recent winners in this group fall under the banner of corporate social responsibility. Social capitalism is a major trend whereby corporations plan to be better world citizens by being more socially and environmentally responsible. This is proving to be a smart business approach and a useful branding strategy. And on the contrary, if you are forced into that situation, for example, the you know that fee that you owe to the bank now they call you and you have to deal with that thing you've uh, delayed because you're scared of it now you're gonna different parts of the brain are gonna light up they're mostly related to trauma and resistance and fear and and just kind of not being functional so this is why using sexual fantasies um, allows us to experience traumas but from a place where we choose to um, to feel it and feel empowered again great great book really good book. Uh, the second second the, the next one I think we're at like six is zero sugar diet the 14 day plan to flatten your belly blah 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 um, by David Zin Zin Zinchesnik, if I'm uh, correct. Um, this book, sorry, it's David Zinchenko. David Zinchenko, sorry. Now, this book is about, uh, as it says, uh, zero sugar diet. And while I'm not really a big fan of the idea of not eating sugar at all, it did, in you know, just 30 minutes, maybe one hour of reading, uh, completely opened my eyes to how much additive sugar I was getting and various 
negative repercussions for that. So using because just because of this book, I reduced my my sugar intake in about half, which makes it a lot easier for me to stay lean, uh, makes me feel better, and also again, just long term, it's a lot healthier. Is how it should be, but science can't really do that for us. And he actually makes a really good case for how mythology was used to um, allow people to know how to actually act themselves in the world, to carry themselves. Uh, so people didn't really know how the sun worked, how the planet is, you know, biology, things like that. But they did know very profoundly how to act. And he lays a really beautiful case and you see how he talks about things like socialism and communism, which are ideas that are based on atheism and very extreme rational thinking. And these ideas collapsed in just a few decades and led to uh, close to a billion people dying while ideas like, uh, you know, original Christian ideas are still here to this day. So stupid ideas are not supposed to last. <laughs> and um, again, it's a really profound book on everything from uh, how you relate, yeah, reality works, how, how you relate to things, how to um, even have an argument with someone and not having it lead to destruction. The next book is Ultramind Solution by, by Mark Hyman, a famous doctor. Through using fantasies to understand how you're I'll put it this way he says that our fantasies originate mostly in childhood and things that hurt us like for example people abandoning us turn into fantasies of either um, us you know dominating people or us uh, being subjected to them or things like you know, traumas like being abused lead us to wanting to having fantasies of abusing people or being abused ourselves and how we use these fantasies to relive, relive those experiences but from a place of power because uh, this is something that actually Jordan Peterson talks about uh, the guy who wrote the book Maps of Meaning there's been many many studies that actually show that when you enter into a stressful experience if you chose to enter it you're going to use different parts of your brain you know different parts are going to light up than if you react to the situation so for example there's a scary call that you need to make to your partner or your banker or you know to get a job and if you make that call by choice you actually choose to face the fear and do it the parts of your brain that are going to wake up are mostly related to um, exploration and bravery and uh, initiative and finally the art of the argument by Stefan Molyneux is a wonderful book from one of the last truly vocal yet wise philosophers left. Stefan Molyneux hosts a show called Free Domain Radio for many years now and he's very very successful. This book is about arguing. Uh, this guy's an incredibly good debater. He's one of the best debaters I've seen. And in this book, he says why it's so important to know how to debate and also profoundly breaks down the, how a debate works, gives tons of examples of how to properly debate. And this book, this book just allows you to properly articulate yourself in a 
way we're again either reaching uh, he calls it there's there's uh, two types of arguments one where you argue for facts and one where you argue for value so facts meaning helping people realize why uh, this is true and this is not true so why you should do this versus that because this is not true this is true versus uh, value arguments where it's like should we go to this movie or that movie who really revolutionizes the idea of treating your brain um, he basically says that your brain is connected to your body and everything from autism to depression to bipolar disorder to stress and anxiety everything can be healed or at least greatly improved by fixing things like your diet and hormonal balance and how pills are a lot less effective than we thought and they just fix symptoms rather than the problem itself sometimes even exacerbating it so again really really good read the next book is unshakable by tony robbins um talking about how to create financial abundance for the future creating uh, an investment account based on index funds and really showing you how easy and possible it is to retire a millionaire even if you never had a big income you know we're just saving a couple hundred dollars a month again life-changing book the next book is your brain on sex by stanley siegel also very profound the book talks about how we can actually heal ourselves through our sexual desires and fantasies and how to actually communicate that with your partner successfully and how it can make a life much much better for um, doing that and they say that you know you can do that but you're not gonna get in jail or you know it's just a fine but you know what happens when you don't pay a fine um, the it has to be taken by force so the end result if you don't pay it is jail so the book map of meanings maps of meaning sorry um, again extremely profound book he tears apart the very fabric of how you of beingness of uh, what what is called phenomenology basically the study of subjectiveness and how you relate to the world and he argues that science is actually uh, only able to teach us how things are not how things should be it's called uh, um, it's called creating an, an art from an is so basically taking what is and saying this because it's like this as the scripture says and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them one of the key likenesses we inherited through our divine DNA was our giving nature. Form the habit that many mega successful entrepreneurs, including Oprah, have in common. Give 10% of your money away. But we encourage an even more focused habit. Give away the first 10% of your profit to those who need it. Do it first. Do it fast. Do it foremost. Do it with a giving heart. But here's a caveat. Be careful how you give. In a capitalistic society, every expenditure of money can be viewed as an investment. Giving can be mistakenly viewed as a way of depositing your money in the bank of higher power while praying for a better and more immediate return on your investment. We suggest that you don't treat giving or tithing or charitable donations this way. Don't count your hoped for profits that higher power will deposit into your future bank account. Don't expect higher power to bless you with more money because you bought a higher powered certificate of deposit. Don't claim your inheritance in heaven as part of the trillion that you will eventually get because you kept the commandments here. May we humbly suggest, 
don't think of your charitable giving as a return on your investment. Today, 1.3 billion people earn less than a dollar to live on. Half of the world's population lives on less than two dollars a day. Compared with them, you're already so wealthy. It is only in comparing your house or car or job to the rich elite in your own city or country that you might feel poor. But to the rest of the world, you are the elite rich. Many of the world's poor would sacrifice a kidney to trade places with you as financially strapped as you might think you are. In truth, because of your health or your citizenship or your education or your opportunities, you've already received a vast fortune from higher power. You're already living the blessed lifestyle. You've already won the lottery. Be so grateful for what you have already received that you voluntarily agree to pay it forward for the rest of your life without expecting a penny back. It is from this place of overflowing gratitude that your enlightened million dollar successes begin. When your giving truly becomes a privilege and not an investment, then higher power discerns that you can handle money and will bless you with even more. H. Higher Power The H in the word light stands for higher power. 95% of North Americans believe in a higher power, although they may use different descriptions. For most people, even the mention of higher power is politically incorrect. Many business leaders, afraid of offending their customers, keep their own spiritual views private. But in our experience, people are hungry for a spiritual approach to business. The world is ready for it. We believe that business is spiritual. Money is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Materialism is only grossly material when it is grossly negligent, grossly selfish, and grossly greedy. But material things invested in the most valuable assets, people, in helping resolve their needs is the most spiritual thing you can do. If your profits are infused with spirit, higher power can direct you where the money is to be sent. Cracking the Wealth Code Your enlightened enterprise is a locked vault. Higher power knows the code. Higher power knows the exact numbers, the exact sequence. Higher power knows the fastest way to unlock your door. You can take the slow way to discover the same code for yourself. It's called trial and error. If you have enough time and enough money, you can test a thousand products and find the one that seems to have the greatest market potential. But this is not what we're referring to as enlightened entrepreneurs. The third and most rapidly growing group are true enlightened enterprises. Some of the most successful businesses are built on the foundation of higher power principles. To name a few, Newman's Own, The Body Shop, Stonyfield Farms, Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, and Oprah, and there are hundreds of others, probably thousands of others, and more important, lots of new businesses are being born that are purposefully higher power. Their foundation is spiritually based. Notice we didn't say religiously based. At the core of the enlightened enterprise is the specific desire to bring higher power into the boardroom in a very general way. To ask the question, how would higher power run this business? Even if the business doesn't produce an overtly spiritual product, with the right attitude, its business can be enlightened. Do the best ideas come to the ones who are the biggest givers? Why did Henry Ford persist through several bankruptcies to become the icon of the fledgling automotive industry? Where did the idea for Henry Ford's assembly line come from? How did Ford recognize it? Did higher power know that Henry Ford would eventually set up a foundation that would take the profits from the idea of the motor car and funnel hundreds of millions of dollars to less fortunate people? Where did the idea for using oil as fuel come from? How did Rockefeller recognize it? Did higher power know in 1870 that Rockefeller would create standard oil and eventually create a foundation that would give away hundreds of millions of dollars? Where did steel come from? How did Andrew Carnegie recognize it? Did higher power know in 1872 that Andrew Carnegie would eventually create the world's largest steel company? 
Did higher power know that the profits would eventually be all given away to fund 2,800 libraries all across America? We would like to suggest that the answer is yes. Do the best ideas flow to those who dedicate themselves to the process of becoming the biggest givers? If you got a billion dollar idea, what would you do with the accumulated wealth? Could higher power trust you with it? What would you use it for? Here's the real bottom line. An enlightened enterprise needs to be refocused on giving. It reshapes its entire mission to be a company that gives. Its success is based on its desire to give, not its desire to make a profit. Profits are secondary. Giving comes first. Whether you are a country, a company, or a character, your GDP, your gross domestic product, profit, or prosperity is directly linked not to just giving, but to giving first. From macro to micro, this rule holds true. It models the higher power pattern. Great givers pattern their life after higher power. The greatest giver of all. 95% of them will potentially fail. You can also imitate other people's products to borrow the codes that they've cracked through trial and error. You can study the general principles of business and marketing and apply these concepts to your ideas. You can learn a lot from your own experience about which the codes seem to work most of the time. Over a lifetime, you can become a code cracker able to figure out how to get inside your own vault. But there's a source for your perfect code right now. Higher Power knows the secret numbers to every vault of your business. Higher Power knows which ideas to focus on and which ideas to forget. Higher Power knows which team members to assemble and which ones you need to let go. Higher Power knows which marketing messages will reach the right people immediately. The combination of marketing words is every bit as important and powerful as a combination of numbers on a safety deposit box. If done in the right order and the right combination, the words of your marketing message open up vast fortunes much more quickly and more easily. So the code is unlocked. It is revealed to you number by number by number so that you can create a product that is enlightened and will be recognized by those customers who are destined to see it. They say, that's it. I knew that was it. They follow their intuition, not even knowing why. They literally come to you slowly at first, but then bring their friends with them. Come, Jim, Kim, Fred, Maria, come. I found a product, an enlightened product. You've got to see this. It is enlightened word of mouth. The business starts to grow. How could it not grow? The only danger is that the enlightened entrepreneur loses sight of where the business is actually coming from. He or she begins to feel it's his or her own brilliance and hard work that brought it all about. The cholesterol of greed starts flowing in their veins and the plaque of pride starts to build up in their arteries. They stop giving and start hoarding. And that brings on the inevitable heart attack. The stroke of selfishness blocks them from the thoughts that could enlighten them. That's why enlightened entrepreneurs need the constant nourishment of the nutrients of an enlightened life, the nutrients of humility, the nutrients of gratitude, the nutrients of openness and positivity, the nutrients of happiness and the nutrients of joy, the nutrients of faith, the nutrients of trust, the nutrients of connection with your higher power. T, Trustee of Residual Philanthropy. The T in the light principles represents the word trustee. In the legal world, a trustee is someone who holds the assets of a trust to distribute them to the beneficiaries. You are the trustee of your wealth. Your enlightened fiduciary responsibility is to maximize the assets of the trust for your loved ones and for generations of future beneficiaries. Capitalism is all about ownership of real property or intellectual property. With enlightened capitalism, it's not ownership that counts, it's stewardship. Stewardship or trusteeship is about achieving success because you don't want to own anything. You simply want to control the flow of it through you. You then become the temporary custodian, not the permanent owner. You make it, enjoy it, use it, take good care of it, maintain it, clean it up, improve it, and then prepare it to hand off to the next generation or the next custodian.